Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 1st, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. It was a beautiful morning with mostly sunny skies and a light east-southeast wind. Gave me some time to look around for warblers without worrying about the hawks getting up. And it did take the hawks a while to get up. They had to wait for the thermals to build and that also resulted in a relatively high altitude flight. As the day went on, it clouded over and the winds mostly remained southerly, although in the midday there was a lake breeze that kicked in and the winds were kind of fighting back and forth. We ended up staying at the north lookout and the southerly winds ended up winning out. And then as we got into the mid to late afternoon, there was some rain that moved through and shut down the flight. We are now in May, so it's the best birding month of the spring and probably of the whole year. Lots of cool birds around and new arrivals every day. Here we have a bird that's black overall with some sort of tannish yellow to the back of the head and some white highlights to the wing and the tail. This is a male bobolink. Looking down from the bluff onto the rocks below, I spotted this shorebird. We see overall it's brown on top, white underneath with some spotting, and the way it moved was it kind of bobs its body as it moves around. This was the season's first spotted sandpiper. Here we have a songbird that has a lot of yellow to the head and breast. We see yellow spectacles as well, and we see kind of a thick bill. This isn't a warbler bill, this is a thicker bill. And the back half of the bird's a little bit more plain overall, grays and whites, including some wing bars. This is a yellow-throated vireo. Here we have a bird where we do see that really thin warbler bill. Overall, this bird is black and white because it is a black and white warbler. Black and white warblers like to crawl all up and down tree trunks and branches, and sometimes they're in funny poses. Here we have a warbler with a lot of yellow with some black streaking and some orange highlights to the face and a white patch on the wing. This is a male Cape May warbler. And I later captured another Cape May warbler in flight, and these were the first for the season. Here we have a very small songbird with a narrow bill and a long tail. We see overalls white underneath and more grayish on top, and it has a white eye ring. This is a blue-gray gnat catcher. Here we have another bird with a white eye ring, and this is actually a fly catcher. We can see an orange underside to the bill and just a very plain breast. And the same bird from another angle, we can see some white wing bars. This was the season's first least fly catcher. Here we have a medium sized bird that's kind of a reddish brown to the back, a white breast with some streaking to it. And it was singing many different calls and songs and repeating each of them two times because this is a brown thrasher. Here we have a warbler that's largely black above, some white below with a lot of bright orange highlights. This is a male American red start. And here's another look at an American red star dropping down from its perch. And again, these were the first for the season. Here's a warbler that if I gave you one word to describe this bird, what would you say? Probably yellow, because this is a yellow warbler. Here's a warbler in flight with a bit of a black mask to the face. And we see yellow highlights on the side and a yellow rump, because this is a yellow rumped warbler. Here's a warbler we've been seeing a lot of lately. Overall, this bird's pretty plain with a little bit of streaking on the yellow upper breast, maybe a little bit of a reddish highlight to the top of the head as well. And when these birds are up in the tree, they're usually bobbing their tails. This is a palm warbler. Here we have a large swallow that is dark underneath and in good light, you'll notice it's a bluish purple color. This is a male purple martin. Here we have a bird with a black head and black to the wings with a lot of orange and a few white highlights. This is a male Baltimore Oriole. And this Baltimore Oriole was enjoying some of the grape jelly we put out for it. And we also had a rose-breasted grosbeak checking out the feeders. This was my first for the season. We had another good flight of blue jays today with over 1,500 counted. Getting into the raptors, we see this one has very pointed wings and it was small in size and has dark streaking underneath. So a small dark falcon that flies in a very fast, aggressive manner is a merlin. Here we have a small compact buteo. We see relatively pointed wingtips because the wingtips are only made up of four feathers. One, two, three, four. We see a dark tail with a wide white band and some brown barring underneath along with a dark trailing edge to the wings. This is an adult broad-winged hawk. 
Here's two birds from a small flock of rusty blackbirds that flew over. Note the pale eye and the distinctive shape to the tail. Here we have a bird that's tan and yellow underneath. We see a yellow tip to the tail and a black face mask. This is a cedar waxwing. Here's a crow that flew over, giving a very nasally call, making it a fish crow, which is pretty uncommon here at Derby Hill. We see a lot of American crows, but very few fish crows throughout the season. We had a decent flight of ospreys today, with 22 counted as migrants. Here we have a large dark raptor, and we see a relatively small head. And we also see white patches in the center of each wing and a white base to the tail. This is an immature golden eagle. Compare that to this bird where we see a larger head and we see a lot of splotchy white throughout the whole underside, including the body of the bird and the wing pit areas, making this an immature bald eagle. And this would make a good comparison to look at the size of the head. So again, the bald eagle has a big head, Golden Eagle has a smaller head. Bald big, golden small. Bald Eagle big, golden eagle small head. Here we have a small raptor with rounded wingtips and a long tail. This is an occipiter. This is a sharp shinned hawk. And notice that all the tail feathers are the same length, giving it a very squared off tip to the tail, and that the markings to the underside are a bit blobby overall. This is the juvenile plumage of sharp shinned hawk. We were standing on the bluff in the afternoon looking down on a couple of brown swallows. It looked like they were checking around the muddy embankment to possibly nest. But the interesting thing was that this one had its undertail coverts fluffed out, which normally I don't see on this species. I wonder if that's something that they do more as uh, territorial or courtship since they were looking for a place to nest. But this is a northern rough-winged swallow. Around 4 p.m. we had some rain move in that shut down the flight, and the flight never picked up again afterwards, even though the rain didn't last that long. Today we had a total of 87 species. We had six new species for the season today, which were spotted sandpiper, least flycatcher, yellow-throated vireo, American redstart, Cape May warbler, and rose-breasted grosbeak for a total of 159 species this season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had 116 turkey vultures, 22 ospreys, 56 bald eagles, 16 northern harriers, 210 sharp shinned hawks, 5 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 345 broad winged hawks and 23 red tailed hawks. We had one golden eagle, and for falcons, we had 8 kestrels, 3 merlins, and 2 peregrines for a total of 807 migrating raptors. That brings the season total to 79,065. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for rain showers early, then some sunshine in the afternoon with a high in the mid-60s. Winds southwest shifting west at 10 to 15 miles per hour with the passage of a cold front. So in the morning with that southwest wind, that's a more favorable direction, but we'll have to see how gloomy and rainy it ends up being. And then after the cold front comes through, it's switching to a more straight west wind and sunshine so we may end up moving down to the south lookout and really the winds aren't getting super strong following the cold front like they sometimes do so i think we'll end up with a bit of a flight for the afternoon and i would expect moderate migration overall the weekend's not looking so good for saturday cloudy with occasional rain showers a high around 50 and light northwest winds we'll be at the south lookout expect light migration and for sunday overcast with showers a high in the low 60s and light north northeast winds so we'll be at the south lookout again and expect light migration all right, another great day out at the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. We had absolutely beautiful weather in the morning, and it was really nice to see some warbler species returning. We had a good group of people out today, including one visitor who's been around the past two days who has a month off of work and is just starting a journey and heading to the Canadian Rocky Mountains. So we wish her the best of luck. I think she had a good visit here, and I'm sure she'll have a lot of adventures over the next month. And uh, the hawks were a little bit slow to get going today, but it really picked up in the afternoon with larger numbers, although the flight line was pretty high. But overall, a great day of birding, and it's only going to get better over the next few weeks as we come into the peak of the songbird and the warbler migration. So hope you can come out and visit us soon here at Derby Hill. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.